and welcome to your program of choice, Health Affair on AIT. It's a platform where we focus on public health issues, challenges of women and children, with the aim of preferring lasting solutions. I am your regular uncle, Osho Mowa Daniels. This week's edition is devoted to malaria and how we can work together to win the battle against this scourge. Let's begin with our new segment. Oh, that's an Ebita. I have got my car for full body work. <laughs> madam, to madam, look, we will shine this car. Eh? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. This cup doesn't sound good at all. What are you doing about it? Oka doesn't want to go to the hospital so that they won't say he has COVID-19. No, now. Cough is a sign of different infections, including tuberculosis. <laughs> You would only know which cough it is if you go for testing. Kai, I've been coughing for more than two weeks now. There's no need to fear. I have done this test myself. To know the right treatment for the particular cough you have, you must first get tested. Ogache Kamo, make you day sure. Because who, who no go? go? No go, no. Check that cough for tuberculosis. If your cough is more than two weeks, it could be tuberculosis. TB tests and TB treatment are free. Just call the National TB Hotline on 3340 for information on where to get the test. This message is brought to you by the Federal Ministry of Health with support from the American people. The Commissioner was represented by the Permanent Secretary, Lagos State Ministry of Health, Dr. Lucia Gogboye in a work around some areas across the metropolis to sensitize the residents. We made it 627,000 deaths from malaria globally, and 96 of these deaths occurred in 26 countries. Again, Nigeria seems to be uh, among the leaders there. Uh, DRC, Uganda, Mozambique, Angola, and Burkina Faso accounted for about 50% of all the deaths globally. So. Uh, what we're saying is basically that Nigeria contributed 27% to the global malaria burden and then also com contributed 27% uh, to global malaria death. Malaria remains a major public health challenge and it is still the leading cause of morbidity and mortality in the vulnerable group, mainly children under five years of age and pregnant women. Of course, this is not the only group that is affected. This is because to, uh, from 2021 uh, World Malaria Report, in Nigeria, malaria accounted for 7,428 cases and 19 deaths per hour. Malaria is also the most common cause of outpatient visits, hospitalization, and death. 25% of infant mortality and 11% of maternal mortality. As you're all aware, malaria is endemic even in our state and it poses a major challenge to the state as it impedes human development. The cosmopolitan nature of the state, coupled with the behavior of our people and the abundant distribution of coastal areas, encourage the availability of stagnant water for the breeding of the Anopheles mosquitoes. This is responsible for the stable pattern and continuous transmission of malaria all year round within the state. In line with the 2022 theme, Unless Innovation to Reduce the Malaria Burden and Save Lives, the Commissioner noted that it has become necessary to deploy new tools to combat malaria scourge in this state. All the different thematic areas we're talking about in the public sector, private sector, vector control, surveillance, case management, we will always do whatever we can to join the force in the elimination of malaria. Malaria, as you all know, or like experts have told us, is caused by plasmodium species of uh, the mosquito, which is transmitted through the bites of an infected female Anopheles mosquito. Malaria is preventable and curable. However, if it is not well endued, it can result in very dangerous uh, dimension of uh, another illness, especially in expectant women and children under five years, referred to as a vulnerable group. Everyone has a part to play in the fight against malaria. We must ensure that we sleep inside long-lasting insecticidal nets 
particularly as parents women and children under the age of uh, five. Expectant women are expected to use the recommended anti-malaria medicines to prevent malaria in pregnancy. We clean our environment properly via effective refuse disposal and management. We cover our water storage containers, clearing our gutters, dredging of canals and other channels, among others, which will allow us to be well fortified against uh, this uh, very dangerous uh, but common disease. All the places that we have been asked to clean, they are breeding sites for mosquitoes, hence our proper maintenance and management of the environment will prevent mosquitoes from breeding. We must trust, before treating for malaria, we must test, and the use of a recommended anti-malaria medicines for treatment if the result is positive. This is because many diseases present with symptoms like malaria, including COVID-19, typhoid fever, stress, diarrhea, respiratory tract infections, among others. Thus, testing for malaria would distinguish malaria from other diseases and other and proper treatments with the recommended medications can begin promptly. You know, and it's a, it's a shameful fact that, you know, um, you know, close to about 30% of deaths globally on malaria happens in Nigeria, and kids below five, you know, bear the brunt of most of this, uh, you know, menace. And I think we just want to take this momentous, momentous uh, occasion to uh, pledge our support again, redouble our efforts, and put all hands on deck, uh, you know, for the commendable action that you know all uh, the ministries and all the all the forces that are working to control eliminate like our lady said before i think uh, in the effort and the fight against malaria right i think it's a big menace i mean if you look at what's happening on covid globally uh, you know covid has not impacted us as much but the kind of toll it's taken on malaria you know malaria takes on on our populace is far more uh, you know scary uh, so i think it's important that we redouble our efforts uh, towards malaria the vaccines that will be used to prevent malaria is already um, in the development stage. Um, while we have this groundbreaking advance in the development of new tools to fight the disease um, with the potential to save a lot of lives and to ensure that supplies are you know, available to all, it is also important to ensure that we continue to maintain the momentum while ensuring that there is availability of preventive measure? Uh, effective control for the prevention of malaria. Effective diagnosis and appropriate treatment of malaria cases and monitoring and evaluation with emphasis on operational research and the use of its results for evidence-based programming. Adding that the war against malaria is one that must be won collectively, speakers at the event also called for continuous community engagement and awareness campaign. World Malaria Day is commemorated on the 25th of April every year to raise awareness about the disease. The World Health Organization has scheduled the hybrid training in Abuja on 25th to 29th April 2022 for health professionals with the intent to emphasize the importance of integrating the oral cholera vaccine as option for emergency and preventive cholera outbreak in endemic countries. The training, which focuses on ending cholera, a global roadmap to 2030, is intended for individuals who would be involved in the planning and implementation of OCV campaigns. The roadmap launched targets a 90% reduction in cholera death by 2030 and the elimination of cholera in at least 20 countries out of the 47 currently affected. The WHO Regional Director for Africa, Mashidi Somoeti, says the increasing use of oral cholera vaccines to complete other interventions including water, sanitation and hygiene for prevention and cholera outbreaks is additional achievement in humanity work towards vaccine equity and universal health coverage. Dr. Chukwe Buka is a young dentist striving to improve access to dental health care in Nigeria through creative innovation. We are basically trying to help doctors or dentists that do not own clinics see their private patients. 
right? So they come in with their patients, they have a space, they have staff, they have nurses to assist them and they see their patients. Now, what this does in the long run is that it improves access. It helps people that um, otherwise would have remained untreated from dental issues. It helps them gain treatment because you may not know a dental clinic close to you, but at least some people know who have a dentist here. I know this person is a dentist. And you can easily just speak to that person. Whether he has a clinic or not, he can just walk into any of our facilities and see his patient. Like Dr. Chiko Ebuka, the 2022 World Intellectual Property Day provided a platform to encourage youths across the globe to leverage on innovations in various aspects of human lives. They have the, uh, what it takes for them to function and uh, help Nigeria to be a greater country as we move forward. We are also saying that the Nigerian Corporate Commission and other agencies of government responsible for growing uh, intellectual property will be more available to support their, uh, the use of their talents. People should be able to uh, benefit from their intellectual activity, from their ideas. So we have so much in this country that if we harness it, we will get more than what we are getting from oil. And it's all tied to intellectual property. The issue of herbal medicines, the issue of foods, geogra geographical indication, the branding. That's why we encourage the young people who are so innovative. I mean, the youth, they have so much. You see them on uh, the social media, the handle and the rest. All we are asking them is come to us so that we'll be able to regulate and package you very well. You follow the law so that you won't run foul of the law. The name is very important of a product. Your design also is very, very important. So it's more than uh, that, all that. So we, we are encouraging people. I think intellectual property may be the future for this country if we have to harness it. One, they should go and register it with the Patent and Trademark Office. Then uh, they should register it as they are processing, as they are about to make the application to NAVDAC for registration of the product. Once they have it, I want to assure them that NAVDAC we protect it. Intellectual property rights gives an individual the exclusive right to their innovations, design, trademarks and other creation for a certain period of time. In the year 2000, the World Intellectual Property Organization designated April 26th as World IP Day to raise awareness on how creative works can impact on daily living. The theme for the 2022 celebration is IP and Youths, Innovate for a Better Future. So we're here to, you know, just support the cause and encourage other people. My child had um, ASD and VSD, which means two large holes in the heart. And we've actually been to the hospital in India, Apollo Children's Hospital, because it was for her. And um, she had her heart surgery done there in India. And it was a very, very sweet experience. It was successful. Everything went well. Baby Jody Adenola was diagnosed with two holes in her heart at the age of 10 months. Since then, our parents have spent fortunes looking for solution. Fortunately for baby Jody, help has not come away, even as many children continue to suffer from heart-related illnesses. Esparta, however, noted that the causative agents of many of these diseases are preventable through vaccine immunization. Always watch your card to know when you're supposed to go for your immunization and then please try as much as possible to vaccinate your children. You know, sometimes it's um, ignorance that causes some of these things. So we, I, you have to get the kids vaccinated because, for instance, pertussis or whooping cough, that's DPT vaccination. So if you don't uh, vaccinate them against pertussis or whooping cough, they can get uh, problems with heart, apart from deafness. So some of these viruses can cause, uh, and bacterial infections can cause heart disease. So it is important to get uh, prevention. The next thing I always like to emphasize, because we face similar problems in India, when you get throat pain as a child, it's important to go to a doctor and rule out streptococcal infection with, and they should take appropriate antibiotics because if they don't take antibiotics they can get what's called rheumatic fever and that can affect the heart. Uh, immunization gives good quality of life. The thing is uh, there is uh, there is another thing about like uh, um, about vaccination for uh, COVID. Uh, like uh, I had three doses of COVID vaccine but there are still people are skeptical about going and having vaccination. 
there are rumors that uh, taking vaccination kills the people that is not the true thing so anything any medical treatment whether it's a surgical management or a medical management or vaccination there may be a very rare complication but we cannot just only talk about the complication and uh, not looking at the broader uh, good picture to improve on the decrease in life expectancy amongst most Nigerians the expert scored for regular health check. You can see somebody looking beautiful, looking handsome, but you don't know internally there are certain things that are not working well. So what, what we're doing here is to bring this free screening program to them, you know, at zero cost. We're just asking them to come and take advantage of the, the, the availability of world-class medical professionals in the area of cardiology, in the area of uh, renal and transplant uh, surgeries in the area of orthopedics, you know, to come and, you know, listen to them, get tested, have a consultation at zero cost. Take care of your sugars, take care of your blood pressure and don't abuse pain-killing medication. That much should, should make sure that, you know, they, they don't reach a point of renal failure. Once they do reach failure, then they will need to be under very aggressive follow-up with the, with the local nephrologist and then you'll have to have a transplant at some point. World Immunization Week is celebrated in the last week of April to highlight the collective action needed to promote the use of vaccines to protect people of all ages. This year's celebration was marked with awareness work and enlightenment campaigns to achieve the team's objective, which is long life for all. The executive director of Women's Rights and Health Project, Bosse Irosi, has appealed to the media to strengthen collaboration in the fight against gender-based violence by breaking the culture of silence. Speaking at the third quarterly meeting on tackling issues of sexual and gender-based violence in Ojo and Oshodi Solo, local government areas, Irosi noted that despite the efforts, issues of SGBV were still rampant in communities in Lagos State. Parents and community members should stop this habit of wanting to go and beg victims or the survivors not to uh, you know, carry out a case to, to get justice. Because if we keep leaving the perpetrators within our community, it means they will be doing more harm. And when they are doing more harm, more cases will still be happening. If you see somebody doing something wrong, call them to, call them to notice that this thing you are doing is not good. This is how it has to go. In the past six months, under the Agent for Citizen Driven Transformation Project, titled Building Capacity of Civil Society Organizations to Promote Uptake of Justice Related Social Services in the Ojo and Osho, the Isola local government areas of Lagos State, with funding by the European Union. RAP has been working with various NGOs to curtail issues of SGBV. We should encourage more people to report, encourage more, uh, more people to be. Uh, 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 to express what they are going through because most times most people don't want to say anything because they are afraid that the society and then we are also educating uh, the community not to stigmatize any people not to discriminate against any person that reports you don't point hand at somebody to say okay you know that person she was sexually abused that's bad for in a community because that will make people not to speak out then we're also saying that the community should not be begging for people who have sexually abused children. It is a no-no, okay? It's, 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 it's a criminal case and then we, we are willing and ready to make sure that we see it to the logical conclusion. They have been able to build the capacity of 207 community stakeholders to effectively report issues of SGBV in their communities. We have trained them and they are going back to the community to, to carry out their own activities. So, what we have done is to see, measure a kind of finding out what are the challenges they have in the community and also to find out uh, the, the, how the programs that they all design that they want to do in the community, how it's going. Ambassador Joyce Emily Andrew and her husband, Ambassador Patrick Aniwi, have appealed to well-meaning Nigerians in government to look into the plight of widows in Nigeria. They made this call during an empowerment program for widows in Lagos under the umbrella of Supreme Family Entertainment International. The government will help us empower these widows so that they will have something to do, so that they will not be idle because they are really suffering. As I speak to you, some of them don't even have one cup of gari in their homes. So with this one, it can help them know that they have people that love them. The things we brought is not even enough. 
We have over 2,000 widows. The things did not even go around. I'm calling on to Nigerians. They should support us because we are doing a lot of work. Anything they have, nothing is small. They should support. We need them to help us so that we can help these people. We are with the grassroots. We know the grassroots. We know where we can get them. My, my, my advice to the Nigerian government is for them to look into the situations of the country. The situation is critical. Though as an NGO, we cannot do without the body of the government. We all need our government and we, all, we are also praying that God should make things easy, soft for Nigerians. The event, which saw over 2,000 widows empowered, coincided with the 2022 Easter celebration. Giving to the widows is part of the celebration because Jesus Christ gave his life for I and you, for us to be new in him. You understand? So giving is part of it. If Jesus did not give his life, me and you cannot be saved today. I get him. So, but giving to the widow is, is showing love, showing the love of Christ. They have empowered many people. Even some of my voice notes in my brand fighting, I use them as an example. So they have masses in mind and they have added a lot of values to some widows and some orphanage and some, uh, some less privilege. So I just appreciate them for what they are doing for humanity. Uh, God has visited the widows in Lagos in Lagos State, through Mama Supreme. It's part of Easter celebration and also it's empowerment, to empower the widows in Lagos, even beyond Lagos, because we noticed that many other widows came to join in the Lagos widows, to empower them to be resourceful. I want to call Nigerians, well-meaning citizens, wherever you are, because this job is not one person's job. Widows are everywhere suffering. It's not only uh, Madame Supreme, that we settle all of them. I called Nigerians to join hands to make sure that the widows are empowered so that everybody will be happy. Widows in Nigeria are faced with numerous challenges that has been made worse with the harsh economic realities. And this is why the Supreme Entertainment family has made it a point of duty to always provide for them. This is what Mama is known for. She has been going around all the states helping with those less privileged. But it happened that this one entered uh, during the Easter celebration. It just fixed it towards Easter celebration to come and appreciate and follow with those, give them things to, for them to remember that there's some, somebody beside them that remember them all the time. I'm so happy, I'm so great for what the Lord has done for us, being widows. Because all what, even I for myself, I did not even have, I wanted to even go and buy beans, the, what they gave me yesterday for profession, but God has done it for me. That really shows that I'm very happy and God has answered my prayer. The program, which also included a praise and worship session, saw to the women also empowered spiritually. We need support generally. Whatever you have, you can support the Supreme Family. And Supreme Family Office is located at Badagri, Aradagun. When you come to Aradagun bus stop, you ask of Vajane from Vajane Street. Supreme Office is located there. They can get us in a social media page. Malaria is a mosquito-born disease that has remained a public health challenge despite being preventable and treatable. On the program this week, we have a special report on the global statistics, the challenges in tackling the scourge and what needs to be done. In the year 2020, there were an estimated 241 million new cases of malaria and several deaths, with more than two thirds affecting children under age five living in Africa. Another continent has succeeded using public health measures to be able to eliminate malaria over the years. Like malaria is no longer in Europe, it's no longer in the Middle East. We are still left uh, with malaria within the uh, sub-African regions, uh, I mean sub-Saharan region, which is not right. And unfortunately, Nigeria has one of the highest burden when it comes to malaria deaths and infant mortality especially. Uh, malaria affects the red blood cells. It damages every, almost every part of the body. 
especially the kidney, the blood cell, when the blood is inadequate, before you know it, you realize that the child is having some challenges. Is I mean, it becomes anemic, what we call low blood. He started having low blood. And that low blood has a deleterious effect on other components of the body. Before you know it, without treatment, it might lead to death. So these are some of the reasons. The, like I said, the parasite targets the red blood cells by destroying it. So, and if you don't have um, red blood cells that will carry oxygen, before you know it, you have hypoxia and the, so, uh, what we call the resultant effect or sequelae of the low uh, red blood cells uh, or anemia in the body. It might come as cough for children, it might come with uh, chills and rigors and so on and so forth. There are, so, uh, the, there are a lot of symptoms, but tests will help us to be able to like, identify it properly. Despite several years of strategic initiatives from several quarters to roll back malaria, the menace of dirty environment that provides breeding space for the vector, fake insecticides, fake anti-malaria and attendant self-medication have not helped the situation. There's no way we can be talking about malaria without looking at the environment. Malaria is a mere protozoan infection. Mosquito is the vector that causes about it. So to treat malaria, we have to tackle mal mosquito, the breeding environment that causes about it. But if you look at every nook and cranny, you see that it's everywhere is just like a spot of death. Nigeria is a country of waste. People defecate everywhere. There's no place, even if you go to the places that people eat, the so-called big places, if you see where they eat and see what they happening within that environment, you will shed tears. The insecticide may be working, but if you use it over and over without any form of modification, the likelihood of developing resistance to them are there. But how many of those insecticides are re-insecticides? How many of them are genuine ones? What is the cost of common insecticide in the market today? How many people can buy it? You may go and buy, and what you see is the kerosene being mixed into it. Even today, how many people can buy the kerosene to mix inside it as an insecticide? What is the price of a liter of kerosene today? So all those things is just like we are going around the circle. The rate of inflation is terribly high. The cost of bringing in those products out of the reach. An ordinary man cannot buy any of them. So people resign to faith. It's a very pathetic case. Like, uh, to treat malaria or any other disease, if you do the right diagnosis, which is like 65%, the problem is half solved. But how many people can diagnose such rightly? The healthcare fraud costs across every asset and part of healthcare practices. From the medics to the physicians, to other physicians, pharmacies, medical lab, hospital, everybody, they are faking everything. Somebody can cook up stories and write stories for you that is the malaria test. How do you verify it? How many of them really have what to test for that malaria? The rapid diagnosis is fine. It can give you some results, but it's more like a gamble or a probability test. There are cases of false positive and false negative. But how many people can get it? Those people using it, how sure are they that they're using the quality one and the right one that, has, that has not expired? That's the issue. And the point, who is the person doing it? If you get the right material, right environment, and put the wrong person there, you won't get any results. How many professionals, I mean competent professionals, are that place to do those tests? How many of them can interpret the test? And funny thing, when they do the test, they write the results, write the drug. They don't even know what they're writing. So who do they see? Or who do you blame? People carry everything around, moving along with that sort of uh, <laughs> mention. You see some of these, they uh, have whatever stuff or conventional issues. The QRMB works to somebody that knows it. But somebody come and say he's diagnosing with so many things. Before you know it, he put into another state of confusion. So it's a circle, circle of fraud. If you do the right diagnosis, the problem is half solved. But most of the diagnosis, sorry to say, they may not be right diagnosis. Again, if the person is down and you are giving malaria drug to read, compliance is key. If you give genuine product, quality product that is very potent, and the patient is not complying, it won't do magic. Take this medicine, for instance, at a metal methantrine, take the first dose and repeat it after eight hours. How many people can do that? Some don't even know, they will say, okay, look at, and you see the people hurting and people selling on the streets. Look at the storage condition of those drugs. They put them on trays with the sun and whatever, and somebody saying has taken anti-malaria drug, it's not working. What are you taking? Toxic products. I had 
I'm sorry, I was, I'm using hard now for my brother, who passed away in September. And a year or so before, he called me, he said that uh, he had malaria and used a malaria tablet or whatever medicine, and he couldn't walk after that. I said, you cannot, you couldn't walk? Do you have stroke? Is it half part of your, you know, one side of your body? No. And immediately I typed on my computer, it's one of the anti-malaria that has been counterfeited. And he said, oh, I've been itching for about six weeks. I said, you have been what? You didn't take pretty or whatever? He said he has taken pretty, it doesn't work. He died of complications from kidney problem. The discovery of the malaria vaccine in 2021 gave up to many as a saving grace to the problem of malaria. But how accessible is this vaccine? The vaccine was approved last year and it was meant for children zero to six months to six years of age. Now, the people that can afford such vaccine can use them. Those that can afford it. Personally, as a pharmacist, I've not seen the vaccine. But I know that it's in existence. Physically, I've not seen the vaccine. Are you getting me? But on net, we can read and sit down and we celebrate. If the government can get such and make it affordable and accessible and available to people, that as part of antenatal care, people should use them. It will go a long way if we treat malaria, the root cause, and that is to be a thing of the past, but we are not ready. As it is today, we are not ready. Let's forget about all those grammars. Today, see everybody just be playing jingle, what malaria, they blah, 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 set us of whatever. The person even doing it, how have you, when last did you taste yourself of malaria? The insecticide, what is the nature? Let's assume you put all the whole things in your environment, in your room, oh, blah, blah. My malaria is a communicable disease indirectly from one place to the other. You put, if you may get your room, you get out of the place. What about your neighbor? If there's any case of transfusion, how sure did you taste it that the person is not, the blood is not infected? If the mosquito from your place and all the water, so what do you do? Nobody's safe. When one person is infected, every other person is infected, and that's a vicious circle. It goes around. The mosquito that bites me here can go and bite another person before it dies. So nobody's doing anybody any favor. If you are down or you're donating blood when someone is down, do you know the status? Apart from checking the blood group, do you check how infected is the blood you're donating? The women in labor and all this stuff, if you go to the hospital, they shed tears. Those people, they, they may be the caregivers and all sort of whatever, the patient's relatives that are in the hospital. Some of them sleep on the passage. If you go to some hospital, it's just like a marketplace. Your relation is sick. You take the person to the hospital. Before they discharge your relation, you are down. We must ensure that we sleep inside long lasting insecticide at nights, particularly as parent women and children under the age of uh, five. As parent women, I expect them to use the recommended anti malaria medicines to prevent malaria in pregnancy. We clean our environment properly via effective refuse disposal and management. We cover our water storage containers, clearing our gutters, dredging of the canals and other channels amongst others, which we allow us to be well fortified against uh, this uh, very dangerous uh, but common disease. Nigeria remains the highest contributor to global burden of the disease in Africa, accounting for over 27%. And if this battle must be won, experts say, a collective approach and sincerity of purpose by all concerned must count.
Uh, <laughs> customer, here are the tomatoes. What else shall I give you? Add pepper and... <coughs> ah, 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 auntie. This your cough is getting out of hand now. Uh, take it easy with her now. Eh? Uh, but customer, this your cough. You should go to the hospital. You know I can't go there with this cough at this time. They'll just say I have COVID-19. Customer, <coughs> every cough is different. It could be tuberculosis. It's true, auntie. Check her move. Make you day sure. Because who no go? No go, no. Check that cough for tuberculosis. Check her move, check her move. If your cough is more than two weeks, it could be tuberculosis. TB test and TB treatment are free. Just call the National TB Hotline on 3340 for information on where to get the test. This message is brought to you by the Federal Ministry of Health with support from the American people. If you are just joining us, it's Eta on AIT and next on the programs and nutrition segment. On this segment, we we'll focus on fruits, food items, and the nutritional value to help you make healthy choices. Tiger nuts, also known as earth almonds, were one of the first plants cultivated in Egypt and traditionally used as both food and medicine. Tiger nuts are rich in variety of nutrients and have been linked to several health benefits. Tiger nuts are rich in antioxidants, which are beneficial compounds that protect your body against aging and diseases like cancer and heart disease. Tiger nuts also promote digestion in various ways. Contents of tiger nuts are as follows. Calories, 103 to 121 grams. Fiber, two to seven grams. Cabs, nine grams. Protein, one gram. Fat, seven to nine grams. Vitamin E, 278% of daily value. Iron, 13 to 40% of daily value. Phosphorus, 9 to 11% of daily value. Vitamin C, 2 to 8% of daily value. Magnesium, 3 to 5% of daily value. Zinc, 5 to 7% of daily value. Potassium, 3 to 5% of daily value. And calcium, 1% of daily value. Please come with me to our clinical segment for tips on healthy living. Risks that will be identified that can affect the art include unhealthy diet, tobacco, too much sugar, uh, lack of exercise or physical inactivity, and uh, high blood pressure. And also, lately, we also know that hair pollution is one of the risk factors that can affect, that do affect heart disease. They have, everybody has got the responsibility to be able to know first what do you do to keep your heart, to keep heart disease away. Uh, like we have just mentioned, make sure that your diet does not contain too much salt. Make sure that your diet contains heart-friendly oil. You use heart-friendly oil. There are so many oils available in the market. Make sure you use heart-friendly oil to cook. Ensure that you undertake exercise at least 30 minutes every other day, like about 150 minutes a week, as been recommended. And do not sit down for a prolonged time. Because it has also been known that prolonged sitting down affects the heart. And uh, watch your weight. Do not carry excessive weight. 
to reach the common woman by telling her, be careful, the amount of oil you use to fry that your akara, for example. Mm. Mm. Do you understand? This is a better oil to use. This is not a good oil to use, mm. for instance. And then you encourage her to teach her children the right foods to eat. Teach her husband the right times to eat. Encourage her to make sure that they all have adequate sleep. You're beginning to send the message easily, especially when you target women and children. Your contributions on how to improve human lives in the nation's health sector matters a lot to us on Health Affair Desk. Please be a part of this segment by calling the numbers showing on your screen. Sometime, governments should also look at a community like this. We are the ones that need assistance, mostly. Uh, from the from the community when you look at other community you find out that this is where we found ourselves most of what we're doing here is uh, on self-help so community should come to our aid is that uh, government should come to our aid is either they come through ngo or either they come direct whichever way they come fine it will help us that's this is where we draw the curtain on the show this week please join us same time next week for another interesting edition of the show the platform is open for advertisement of your products and services at a subsidized rate. My name is Oshomo Danis. Please keep staying safe and thanks for watching.